they're late, but I don't. There they go. Shabbat Shalom. Good morning, everybody. We're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're joining us from home as well. And, uh, and we're always delighted, Elise, to have Elise Wojciechowski leading us this morning in, in prayer, prayer and in song and in service, and hope that you're, you're, we find you at home healthy and well. And we hope that you'll join us, that you'll, you'll join us in song and in prayer and in movement as, uh, as we give thanks for our spaces, our respective spaces, and we give thanks for our health for the ancestors ahead of us, uh, the ancestors behind us who, who brought us to this moment and for all those who are around us. And we hope that you'll join us with the singing of Ma Tovu, which can be found on page 192. Ma Tovu, oh Yisrael, v'ani b'roch astecha, ahavu v'hitacha. Adonai <laughs> Lecha Adonai Tratzon, Elohim Berov Hastecha, Aneni Be'emetishecha. And we continue together as we give thanks for our bodies, for the finely tuned networks that are our systems. As we say together, praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe who formed the human body with skill, creating the body's many pathways and openings. It is well known before your throne of glory that if one of them be wrongly opened or closed, it would be impossible to endure and stand before you. Blessed are you, Adonai, who heals all flesh, working wondrously. Baruch atah Adonai, rofecho basar umafli la'asot. Elohai neshama shenatata bi Shama Shanata Tabi Tehorahi We thank you. We say, My God, the soul you have given me is pure. You created it, you shaped it, you breathed it into me, and you protect it within me. Baruch Ata Adonai. We hope that you'll join us on page 198. We turn to Nisim Bechol Yom, to our, our blessing for our daily miracles. And perhaps what we will do, Elise and I will alternate maybe a verse of Hebrew, and then I'll read the next verse of English. So we'll sing and read together and, and join us, please, and access either the Hebrew or the English or both, wherever you see fit and to imagine and give thanks for our daily miracles. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lesech divina, lehavchin ben yom uven laila. Amen. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who opens the eyes of the blind. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, matir asurim. Amen. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who lifts up the fallen. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, rokah haaretz al hamayim. Amen. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who strengthens our steps. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, malbish arumim. Amen. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who gives strength to the weary. 
Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Ama'avir sheina me'nai Utnu ma'me'ach ha'pai Amen. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who made me in the image of God. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Sha'asani bat chorim Amen. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who has made me a Jew. Amen. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Ozer Yisrael b'gvura. Amen. Praised to you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who crowns Israel with splendor. We continue now on page 204 with our blessing for Torah study, and we hope that you will join us. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu la'asok b'divrei Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to engage in the words of Torah. We seekers of God, how do we find you? In good deeds and in the study of Torah. And your search for us, you find us in the bending of the knee, in the rigor of study, in the honesty of commerce, through a good heart, through decency, in respect, true fellowship, companionship, and love, through truth and peace, in the no that is really no, and the yes that is really yes. Baruch Ata Adonai, Amilamed Torah Leamo Yisrael. Elo Devarim She'en Lehem Shi'or. These are things that are limitless, of which a person enjoys the fruit of the world while the principle remains in the world to come. They are, and let's join together, honoring one's father and mother, engaging in deeds of compassion, arriving early for study, morning and evening. Dealing, dealing graciously with guests, with guests visiting, visiting the sick, providing, providing for, for the, the wedding, wedding couple, couple, accompanying the dead, dead for burial, being, being devoted in prayer, and, and making peace among people. people. But the, the study, study of Torah, Torah encompasses them all. And we'll join together now in the singing of Psalm 150. That can be found on page 218, giving thanks, giving praise for all of the things that we hone in on and give thanks and praise and wonder a beautiful day outside and sunlight and we pray good health and thanksgiving join us please in psalm 150 on page 218 <laughs> Alleluhu kirokudlo, kol haneshama tehalleluya, alleluya, alleluya, kol haneshama tehalleluya, alleluya, alleluya, alleluhu beteka shofar, alleluhu benedel chinor, Page 223, as we continue in the middle of the page, you shall always be praised, great and holy God, our sovereign in heaven and on earth. Songs of praise and psalms of adoration become you, acknowledging your might and your dominion. Yours are strength and sovereignty, sanctity, grandeur, and glory always. We offer our devotion, opening our hearts in acclamation. Baruch ata Adonai, el melech gadol habtishbachot, el hahodot. Adon Haniflaot, Abocher Bashere Zimran Melech El Hei Olamim. 
We'll continue now with our Varhu, page 228, and invite you please in body or in spirit to rise. We'll continue together in the Hebrew creator of light and darkness, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Yotzer Or Uvarei Chosha, Osei Shalom Uvarei Atakol, Hameir Laaretz Veladarim Aleha Barachamim, Uftubo Uftubo Mechadesh Bechol Yom Tamid Maasei Bereshit, Marabu Maasecha Adonai, Kulam Bechokma Asita, Malaha Aret Kinyanecha, Tit Barach Adonai Eloheinu, Al Shabach Maasei Yadecha, Al Mereor Shesita Yifarucha Sela, Or Chadash Al Tzion Ta'ir, Benizkech Ulanu Mehera Oro, Baruch Ata Adonai, Yoser Hamerot. Once or twice in a lifetime, a man or woman may choose a radical leaving, having heard Lech Lecha, go forth. God disturbs us toward our destiny by hard events and by freedom's now urgent voice, which explode and confirm who we are. We don't like leaving, but God loves becoming. Baruch Ata Adonai, Habocher Be'amo Yisrael Be'ahala. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai And please be seated as we continue with the Vea Hafta. Vea Hafta, Behet Adonai Elohecha, Behol of Hakha, Hol of Shecha, Uchol me Odecha, Behayu. Advarim ha ele, Asher anochi mitzapha, Ayom alevavacha, Vishin antaham levanecha, Vidivar tahapam, Vishin techa bevetecha, Uvlach techa baderech, Uvshach becha uvkumecha. Ukshartam le oot aliadecha, the hayulatota oot pain e necha. Uchtaptam al mezuzot e teha, uvi sharefa. Clemantis keru, baasi temet kol mitzvotai, the he tem kedoshim le loechem. Ani. Adonai Eloheichem, Asher Otsi Hitiatchem, Meeretz Mitzrayim, Liot Lachem Lelohim, Ani Adonai Eloheichem. 
Nemet, the eternal truth is that you alone are God and there is none else. We say together, may the righteous of all nations rejoice in your love and exalt in your justice. Let them beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Let nation not lift up sword against nation nor learn war anymore. You shall not hate your brother or your sister in your heart. The stranger that sojourns with you shall be accepted as your equal for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Why do you crush my people and oppress the poor, asks God. We know that the Eternal One defends the poor and upholds the rights of the needy. Praise to God Most High. Blessed is God and deserving of blessing. <laughs> No rati he loto se fele. She rahoda sha, she puke ulim. Le shim ha, al svata yam. Page 242, as we rise for the tefillah. Adonai, sifatai tiftahu fi agitahilatecha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe Avotenu Mimoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibur, Hanora, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim. Vikone hakol, Vizoher haste avot vimahot, who may be Gibula lit nevenehem, Lemma and Shemo be ahava, Melech oser umoshia umagain, Baruchata adonai, Magain Abraham, Viz Rat Sarah, Ataki bole ulam adonai. Mechaye ha kol ha ta rav le moshia, mashi ha ruach hu meurit ha ka ha shem. Mecha kel chayim bechesed, mechaye ha kol berachamim rabim. So mech nochrim berofe cholim, hu matir asurim, hu mekhayem emunato. Li shenei apar, mi chamocha ba'al kihurot, hu mido melech, melech me bit u mechayev, hu matzmiach yeshua, v'neeman atalach hayot hakol, baruch ata Adonai, mechayev hakol. Nikate shechim ha baulam, Keshem shemakti shimo to bishmem harom, Kakatu valiad neviecha, Vikoraze ze ve amar, 
Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzivahot, Melochol Haaretz, Kivodo, Adir, Adirinu Adonai, Adonainu Matir Shimcha Bechol Haaretz, Baruch Kivod Adonai, Mimkomo, Echadu Eloheinu, Uavinu Malkeinu, Umoshienu Vehu Yashmienu, Virachamav Lehinei Kolchai, Zachim Kedushat Chana Hakdish, Vishiv Chacha Eloheinu, Mipinu Lo Yamush, Leulam Vaed, Baruch Atadonai, Ael Akadosh. And please be seated. We'll continue in just one moment on page 250 with Bashamru as we say the people of Israel shall keep Shabbat observing Shabbat throughout the ages as a covenant for all time. It is a sign for all time between me and the people of Israel. For in six days Adonai made heaven and earth and on the seventh day God ceased from work and was refreshed. <laughs> La sotet a Shabbat, le dorotam berit olam. Beni uvein b'nei Israel, oti le olam. Beni uvein b'nei Israel, oti. Ki sheshet yamim asa Adonai, et ha-shamayim bet ha-aretz, u-vayom Shabbat v'yinavash. Our God and God of our ancestors, be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us with your mitzvot and grant us a share in your Torah. Satisfy us with your goodness and gladden us with your salvation. Purify our hearts to serve you in truth and in your gracious love, Adonai, our God, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage. May Israel, who sanctifies your name, rest on Shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai, who sanctifies Shabbat. Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekadesh HaShabbat. Together, Retze Adonai Eloheinu Be'amcha Yisrael, Utefila Tambe Ahava Tikabel, Utehila Rotson Tamid Avodat Yisrael Amecha, Baruch Ata Adonai, Sha'otcha, Levadcha, Beirana Avod. Continue as we give thanks, as we say, we acknowledge with thanks that you are Adonai, our God and God of our ancestors forever the rock of our lives and the shield of our salvation in every generation. Let us thank you and praise you for our lives which are in your hand, for our souls which are in your care, for your miracles that we experience every day, and for your wondrous deeds and favors at every time of day, evening, morning, and noon. A good one whose mercies never end, a compassionate one whose kindness never fails, we forever put our hope in you. For all these things, O Sovereign, let your name be forever praised and blessed. O God, our Redeemer and Helper, let all who live affirm you and praise your name in truth. Blessed are you, Adonai, your name is goodness, and you are so worthy of our thanksgiving. Baruch Ata Adonai, 
הטוב שמך לחנה אל ההודות. שים שלום, שים שלום, We take a moment, we pray, we meditate in silence. We'll continue now with some studying of some Torah, with some learning of some Torah. We are, uh, we are in Exodus. We find ourselves in the book of Exodus in, in beginning in chapter 10, Parshat Bo. And so perhaps you did some studying last week as well and know where we are in our story. But, but the, the beginning of this Parsha it takes its, its name, Bo, as many of our Parshiot do, from the very first word that we find in the Parsha, which is go go to Pharaoh. And Moses and Aaron are in their uh, continuing pleading with Pharaoh to let the Israelites go free. So this is where we find ourselves. Because he refuses, we know the Egyptians are punished with a multitude of plagues. God sends the plagues of locust and darkness upon the Egyptians and forewarns them about, about the final awful plague 
the death of every Egyptian firstborn. And we know that Pharaoh's heart is continuously hardened and he doesn't allow the Israelites to leave. And Pharaoh tells Moses, be gone for me. And, and God then tells Moses that, that after the, this last horrible plague, Pharaoh will finally allow the Israelites to leave. That midnight, Moses leaves the Israelites out of Egypt and proclaims that each year on the evening of the 14th day of the first month, a festival lasting seven days, will be celebrated in order to recall the liberation of Egypt. We know this holiday, it's Passover. So the beginning of our story is actually where we're going to do a little bit of, of studying together. It felt too early for us to talk about Passover. So, uh, so we are going to actually start with the beginning of the Parsha. And, um, and we are, I'm going to hope to, to screen share. For those of you who have the plout in front of you, um, where we are is on page 407 of the Plout Commentary, but I'm going to screen share the text in the English as well. And what I'm hoping um, is that uh, we will unmute you in just a moment. We'll share the, the blessing for Torah together, for, for an aliyah to Torah together, because we are reading Torah in English. And then if there is a volunteer from, uh, from Zoom, I'm hoping will join us. Um, somebody from Zoom who will read the English of the Parsha. It is not, there are no hard words, no city names, no, uh, no people's names, nothing that is difficult, I promise. Do we have a volunteer from on Zoom who would like to read the English once I screen share it? Thanks, Susan. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's, uh, let's you'll find the blessing on page 368 of your Siddur. And I'm going to screen share the text. So right after, Susan, right after we say the bracha, um, if you would please, hold on one second, if you would please tuck into the English, that would be great. Let me just line it up for you and hopefully um, make it big enough so that you can see it. One second. Susan, can you see that the, the text? Just give me a thumbs up if you can see it. You can see it great. And just yes. unmute. perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Okay. So everybody, it's clunky, but unmute yourselves and we'll we'll share the blessing together. And then Susan, right after the blessing, if you would tuck in, that would be great. And I'll scroll down okay. and you can the page. Okay. 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 Then the Eternal One said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his courtiers in order that I may display these signs among them and that you may recount in the hearing of your children and of your children's children, how I made a mockery of the Egyptians and how I displayed my signs among them in order that you may know that I am the eternal. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, thus says the eternal, the God of the Hebrews, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may worship me. For if you refuse to let my people go, tomorrow I will bring locusts on your territory. They shall cover the surface of the land so that no one will be able to see the land. They shall devour, devour the surviving remnant that was our land to you after the hail and they shall eat away all your trees that grow in the field. Moreover, they shall fill your palaces and the houses of all your courtiers and of all the Egyptians, something that neither you, your fathers, nor your father's father have seen from the day they appeared on earth to this day. What that he turned and left Pharaoh's presence. Pharaoh's courtiers said to him, how long shall this be? Shall this one be a snare to us? Let a delegation go to worship the eternal their God. Are you not yet aware that Egypt is lost? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh, and he said to them, "Go worship the eternal your God. Who are the ones to go?" Moses replied, "We will all go, regardless of social station." 
we will go with our sons and our daughters and our flocks and our herds, for we must observe the eternal's festival. But he said to them, the eternal be with you, the same as I mean to let your dependents go with you. Clearly, you are bent on mischief. No, you gentlemen, go and worship the eternal, since that is what you want. And they were expelled from Pharaoh's presence. Then the eternal one said to Moses, hold out your arm over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat up all the grasses in the land, whatever the hail has left. So Moses held out his rod over the land of Egypt, and the eternal drove an east wind over the land. Almost done. Almost done. If you don't okay. mind. Thank wait, you. wait a second. Right there. Oh. Okay. But all the Israelites enjoy, enjoyed light. Wait a second. Did I goof that? Let me just, okay. So this is where, sorry. So Moses held out his rod over the land of Egypt and the eternal drove an east wind over the land. All that, go. <laughs> okay. All, all that. I, I yeah. lost my place. Right here. You can see it here. See that? Okay. On um, all that and all, all, all that day and that night. And when morning came, the east wind had brought the locusts. Locusts invaded all the land of Egypt and settled within all the territory of Egypt in a thick mass. Never before had there been so many, nor will there ever be so many again. They hid all the land from view and the land was darkened and they ate up all the grasses of the field and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left, so that nothing green was left of tree or grass or of the field in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh hurriedly summoned Moses and Aaron and said, I stand guilty before the eternal your God and before you. Forgive my offense just this once and plead with the eternal your God that this death but be removed from me. So he left Pharaoh's presence and pleaded with the eternal. The eternal caused a shift to a very strong west wind, which lifted the locusts and hurled them into the sea of reeds. Not a single locust remained in all the territory of Egypt, but the eternal stiffened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites go. Then the eternal one said to Moses, Hold out your arm toward the sky that there may be darkness upon the land of Egypt, a darkness that can be touched. Moses held out his arm toward the sky and thick darkness descended upon all the land of Egypt for three days. People could not see one another and for three days, no one could move about, but all the Israelites enjoyed light in their dwellings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is a feat in and of itself to read while somebody else is scrolling. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate uh -oh. it. Appreciate it. So, so please, uh, you, you know, at home, please uh, unmute yourselves as well. What, what are, just, just tell us just to get started. What are some of the things that you notice just in a first, we call it the shot read just on the surface. What are some of the things that caught your attention? Just unmute yourselves and let us know. Yeah, please, Susan, go ahead. Um, that Moses and Aaron were willing to plead on Pharaoh's behalf, as well as uh, speak about the punishments that they were going to get from God. I, that, that's something that struck me. So dialogue, right? Dialogue and advocating, right? Advocating, yeah. right? And right? some compassion that they weren't um, taken over by the, their anger. I, I think right. that okay, there's so no righteous indignation. That's what I think. Right. So interesting, right? We see, we see humanity in a snippet of the narrative where things are about to get quite hostile, right? This is next week, a spoiler alert. Next week we come to, Elisa and I were just talking to uh, the Israelites being freed, right? Freed from, from slavery and, and, and uh, allowed to cross the, the Sea of Reeds. But this is a moment of, of tremendous tension, right? Tremendous tension, and uh, and and we are sorry, not not uh, yeah, not not quite yet. But where we are headed into freedom and crossing the, the Sea of Reeds, right? So so we see uh, we see some humanity, 
in the text, right? What else did you notice? Just, just on the a first cold, what we call a cold read, a surface read. You can just unmute. I was just gonna say that Pharaoh um, apolo you know, apologized. He asked for forgiveness, but then God hardened his heart. But he did what? say for just this one offense. Right, right. And what's up with that, right? Pharaoh, the leader, right? In a time when there were multiple gods, right? When our God, the God who we might say, right? Is the only God for us, but not so for the Egyptians, right? So what is the power dynamic there like, right? And how does it work that God has the capacity to harden Pharaoh's heart? How does that work, right? How does that work in terms of our narrative and our story of peoplehood, right? And, and then, say it again? And why would he do that? And why would God, why would God do that, right? Why would God harden Pharaoh's heart? Isn't God supposed to be on our side? Right, right. What's up with that, right? What's up with God using our adversaries as a tool? Right, how do we understand that? How do we understand that, right? And then the very last, the, the um, section, Susan, that, that you read, that's got an asterisk next to it, um, uh, verses 21 and following, right, was the plague of darkness. And it is such a powerful way to write this. Hold out your arm toward the sky that there may be darkness upon the land of Egypt, a darkness that can be touched. A darkness that can be touched. And Moses held out his arm toward the sky and thick darkness descended upon the land of Egypt for three days and people couldn't see one another and for three days no one could move about. But the Israelites, they enjoyed light in their dwellings. Right, so the rabbis say actually that, that Moses held his arm toward the sky. Some actually say that Moses held his arm above the sky and brought down darkness, right? In, in some of our midrashim, right? How do we understand that? So here we are with this plague of darkness, right? And what do we know historically? And what do we know as people about darkness? It's unsettling. As children, right, M most of us feared it. We had night lights, right? We had things to kind of dispel the darkness, right? We fear often what we can't see. What was, do you think, the purpose, the, even the literary, whether you understand it biblically or not, what was the purpose of having darkness be this plague? Why, 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 why a darkness, that, right? It's such, such an interesting choice of words, a darkness that can be touched. Why darkness and why darkness like this? Um. Yeah, Susan, go ahead. You, you, don't um, to, you don't need to put your hand up. You can just speak. Oh, okay. Um, well, I think darkness uh, is, uh, it's well, first of all, it's depressing. It's, you know, I mean, after a few days of darkness here in Rochester, I mean, the, today the sun is so, the light is life-giving. And there's something uh, very um, difficult about the dark, and um, and it I, I was that's one thought. But the I was also thinking that it's a demonstration that God controls the for, you know the 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 um, nature planets and the you know the all the all that we know of on you know in the heavens and and on earth and um it's it's another facet of mystery and i guess that's it yeah 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 I, I, you, you just checked off so many different important points right 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 how it how how we understand it emotionally how how it affects us emotionally darkness often and i think i think largely right a nod towards God's omnipotence, right? The mm -hmm. mystery of, as Elise said, right, of a God who uses others to be implements, right, right? How we understand that, what it was meant to instill, what the role of Moses was in holding out his arm, right? And then the last bit that we haven't talked about yet, and we'll get to in a second, but that the Israelites enjoyed light in their dwellings, right? This is not not a friendly piece of text in, in, in right in an interfaith kind of gathering, right? Or, or, or uh, right in a gathering where we are of mixed 
uh, mixed perspectives, right? Doesn't doesn't bode well, right? It is it is inequity in its in its clearest terms, right? So we know, uh, according to the midrash, that the very first time that Adam experienced nightfall, he was, as you said, Susan, he was overcome with dread, right? And that the first Shabbat of God's newly created world had lasted 36 hours, and as it ended, Adam feared that under the cover of darkness, his mortal enemy, the snake, would do him harm. So to assuage his angst, his, his, his fear, God provided Adam with two flints from which he was able to provide fire, to make fire. And then we replicate this during Havdalah, when we still recall that first act of human creativity, of human creativity, by saying a special blessing over fire, praising God for enabling Adam to dissipate the darkness, right? We know this from our commentary on Breshi, on, on, uh, on Genesis, that so afraid was Adam of, of of darkness, right? That God provided him with two flints to see what he could do to dissipate that darkness, right? And, and we are told that the darkness did to the Egyptians what they had done to us is what the Midrash goes on to say, but that we had light, right? All the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And we actually followed that pillar of fire throughout the wilderness until we reached Sinai. The ancient Egyptians, however, called the experiential absence of divinity, darkness by day which I thought was a fascinating piece around this, right? Darkness by day, right? So I wanna, I wanna stop this screen share and show, I, hope, I hope I put it up for you. I have it here in the sanctuary. Let me just make sure, yes, here. I wanna share one more piece with you. It's a little bit hard to read, so I will read it out loud, hold on. And I wonder what you think about this piece. Can you see it? Just give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Yeah, okay. So let me read it to you. It's a little bit long uh, and it's hard. You can increase the size of it on your own screen in the view, okay? This is Rabbi Amy Scheinerman who wrote, what is the nature of the plague of darkness? From astronomy comes the suggestion of an eclipse, but we know that eclipses last minutes, not days. From psychology comes the suggestion of deep depression, Susan, as, as you explained as well, that descended upon Egypt after suffering so many plagues, yet depression rarely lifts after a mere three days. Traditional commentators focus on the words vayamesh choshech. This is from, from, from the passage we just read. The JPS, the conservative translation, a darkness that can be touched. And our commentator, Onkelos, derives vayamesh from mush, to move away. And Rashbam, following his grandfather, Rashi, understands it as to grow darker. That is, the darkness grows increasingly gloomy Ibn Ezra offers three alternatives, mush, to touch or to feel, as in Psalms from 115, and mish, ish, to grope, as in Deuteronomy 28, and mush, to move away, as in Exodus. Swarno echoes Nachmanides that the darkness was like a thick fog that light couldn't penetrate. So here's her question. Could the darkness be national moral blindness? The Egyptians abet in the enslavement of Israel and benefit from the injustice of slave, slave labor without a hint of regret. Egypt lived in spiritual darkness while in contrast. But all the Israelites enjoyed light in their dwellings. Bereshit, this comes to us from Bereshit Rabbah from that commentary on, on Genesis, which understands this verse to mean that not in the land of Goshen, but rather that Jews could see light wherever they were. And hence, Israelites visited the homes of their Egyptian neighbors, noted where their valuable, valuables were, but took nothing. And when the time for the Exodus arrived and the Egyptians denied that they had anything to lend the Israelite, that comes later in our text where they're asked to borrow from the Egyptians, their, their gold and silver, the Israelites recalled precisely both objects and their locations within Egyptians home, Egyptian homes, impressed that the Israelites had not taken advantage of the darkness to steal, the Egyptians willingly turned over their valuables. Ooh. Right? Hmm. I actually heard that. Hmm. So what do you think? What do you think? How does this, what do you think of this text? Do you agree with her? Do you disagree with her? I hope she's wrong. Tell us why. I, um, I just don't see anything righteous in scouting out where people keep their valuables in order to um, impress them 
with the fact that you didn't steal it. I mean, <laughs> why do you have to steal? I mean, why, why? I just don't see that as virtuous. Right, right. Why, why, why be celebrated for that, right? When we're looking right. at that, especially in the scope of the plagues, right? Why be, right? Does it speak to the Israelites' character, their integrity, right? Right. Some might say yes, some might say yes, right? Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, what do we understand about this plague of darkness and what it is meant to, to communicate to us, right? That, that, Right, that that Moses, right? Moses has capacity, right, to 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 bring nature into into our scene by way of God, right? That uh, that, that um, it wasn't an ordinary darkness, right? That, Is it darkness disorienting? Yes, I, yes. I was just going to say, right, that, that what's the nature of darkness aside from the emotional one, right? What was it meant to do for the Egyptians? Yeah, Marilyn, right? It's meant to kind of throw them off their game, right? To, to, yeah. to be disruptive and, and unsettling, quite literally, right? That you can't find your way around and to set up a juxtaposition, right? That the, that the Egyptians didn't have, they had this, this palpable darkness, but that the Israelites had light, right? Right. And what else, what else do you notice? Hmm. Um, hmm. Where did the light come, right? There was a return of the light, right? That there was, right? That, that ultimately we know that this darkness dissipates and that there is a return of the light. And, and how do we understand the stark contrast between darkness and light? Susan, I share your, your, um, your concerns that the piece by Rabbi Scheinerman is, is, uh, is a difficult one, right? It's a difficult one, but with the exception of the line in the middle of the passage, which says, could the darkness be national moral blindness? That was the piece that, oh. my, right? Was it supposed to draw our collective attention to this idea that all are accountable, that you can't feign, right? You can't claim that you knew not what was happening, right? You don't get to, to plead ignorance because you couldn't see, right? Is the metaphor you couldn't see, right? That you don't need darkness to be cast to know what you were doing was wrong, and you don't need daylight necessarily to know what is right. That you need to have a sense of um, of, uh, of self regulation, right, and accountability and responsibility. It is a tough passage. It is a tough passage that we read every single year, and a tough passage to to reconcile. And I, I read one final piece. Uh, I'm just just looking for. Uh, put it hold on written by um mary by american poet mary oliver who said someone i loved once gave me a box full of darkness it took me years to understand that this too was a gift yeah and right i thought hmm right i i see some heads nodding and i see i hear some hmms and mm -hmm. uh and I'll, I'll read it one more time because it, it, it is a powerful piece that dovetails beautifully and powerfully, I think, with this difficult passage. Someone I loved once gave me a box full of darkness, and it took me years to understand that this, too, was a gift. Oh. So we will, uh, to be continued, to be continued, I'll, I'll, I'll invite you please to enjoy me, to join me in the, uh, in the bracha following Torah study or Torah reading on page 368. You can unmute or mute. And we'll say together, Baruch Atah Adonai, Adonai, Baruch Atah Adonai, Noteinu Torah. And join us, please, as you just take a minute, please, to remute yourselves. And we'll turn to our concluding prayers to the Alenu, which can be found on page 586, page 586. Mm -hmm. And I'll invite you, please, in body or in spirit, to rise. <laughs> Shalom, our son of the Goyeha Aratsot, Velo Samanu, the Mishpahota Adama, 
We pause now to think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us and those who died at this season in years past and those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. During the period of Shloshim, the last 30 days, we are mourning the loss of Jack Feldman, grandfather of Brian Feldman, and Myrna Silver, stepmother of Seth Silver. And today, this Shabbat marks a yard site, an anniversary of passing for Reuven Adar, Carmela Ambrose, Eleanor Campbell, Barbara Dolan, Rhea Drexler, Sarah Feinstein, Gladys Greenberg, Beverly Groden, Francis Heimberg, Ruth Herman, Meyer, Meyer Horowitz, Selma Ann Kay, Herbert Kraus, Nancy Kreif, Stephen Kushner, Marvin Mandel, Ida Mazinski, Louis J. Pies, Gert Rellen, Alice Levine Rosen, Mary Rudolph, Louis Schildkraut, Esther Schwartz, Ann Schulman, Marshall Spiller, Estelle Weiner, Wendy Wood, Edward Yunker, Edwin Yunker, Bernard Zeldman, and Enid Brody. If there are names that you would add, or names that are better spoken aloud by you, please, would you share that name aloud with us? We say, Zichronam Livracha, may each of their memories be for a blessing as we turn to page 598 to join together in the words of the Mourners Kaddish. Yitkadal Yitkadash me Rabba, Beelma di Vrahirte, Yamlich Malkute, Behayehon of Yomehon, Hayedeho Beit Yisrael, Bagala Wisman Karib, Bimru Ame, Yehesh me Rabba me Barach, Leolam, Ome Omaya, Yit Barach, Beit Shabbat, Beit Faar, Beit Ramam, Beit Nase, Beit Adar, Beit Alev, Beit Alal, Shmei Kudishah, Beit Hu. Le'elami kol birchata v'shirata, tushbechata v'nechamata, damaran le'elami ru amei. Yehesh lama rabba min shamaya, v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael bin ru amei. Ose shalom b'mirma, huya ose shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'al kol Yosheh Tevel bin ru amei. May the one who creates harmony and high bring peace to us and to all Israel as we join together in saying, Amen. Please be seated at home. Please be seated as well. We thank you for joining us. We thank Elise for, for lifting our service in, in song and in prayer and, uh, and want to let you know that there is religious school tomorrow morning uh, in person, unless you are in, in grades five or six, in which case you will be meeting on Zoom. Uh, and, uh, and then we have next Friday night. We hope, we pray all will be well, and we'll have our Bim Bum Shabbat service for those who are newborn to about 7 or so from at 5.30 p.m., followed by our Erev Shabbat service at 8 p.m., which will be Shabbat Shira and uh, the, the celebration of our freedom and crossing the sea, and also our Martin Luther King Jr. observance, where we are privileged and honored and delighted to have Reverend Myra Brown join us as our speaker. She will both uh, be our, our speaker and, and lift her voice in song as well not to be missed. She is a powerful, powerful uh, 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 force in our community now. Uh, please also join us the following Saturday morning with Torah study on Zoom only at 9.15 and then services at 10.30. Our office will be closed, by the way, on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, I want to draw your attention also to uh, February, the month of February, each of the Friday nights in February. Our Accessibility and Inclusion, Inclusion Committee will be offering a different look at accessibility and inclusion. Inclusion this year in particular, 
uh, on Friday nights, uh, presenting four programs broadening the lens of inclusion to racial, ethnic, and family diversity, as well as diversibility. So February 4th uh, will be the first of those events. And then there will, sprinkled in there will also be um, some learning opportunities during the week. They're looking at things from a very different perspective next month, and it, it should be fascinating, fascinating. Uh, Social Action is doing extraordinary work for not just our community, but for the community worldwide. And we hope that you'll look at our website for that and see where you can uh, in, be involved and engaged in any number of places, including where you might contribute. Donations for Kentucky torna Tornado Disaster Relief, Afghan refugees, so very much in need now, and also how to fight against anti-Semitism, plus so very much more as well that can be found on our on our website. And let me ask you if there are any other announcements that we've missed, anything from here, anything at home at all, you can feel free to, to unmute any, any celebrations, any communal news that we should know. Marilyn, I know that there are many opportunities to, uh, to, to be involved and supportive with Afghan refugees that you're working on. I think all of that is posted on our website. Is that correct? Or, or yes? Okay. Um, but, but be in touch also with Marilyn or, or members of the Social Action Committee if you need some more uh, assistance. Any, any, anything else that we should be considering? Okay, well, we will continue and close with our closing song, Al Shlosha Devarim, that can be found on page 642, 642. Al Shlosha Devarim, Al Shlosha Devarim, Al Shlosha Devarim, Haolam Haolam Amed. Al Shlosha Devarim, Al Shlosha Devarim, Al Shlosha, Shlosha Devarim, Haolam, Haolam, O Maid. Al Hatora, the Allah Avoda, the Al Gimilut Hasadim. Al Hatora, the Allah Avoda, the Al Gimilut Hasadim. Al Shlosha Devarim, Al Shlosha Devarim. Ashlusha, Shlusha de Varim, Haulam, Haulam, O Maid. Ashlusha de Varim, Ashlusha de Varim. Ashlusha, Shlusha de Varim, Haulam, Haulam, O Maid. Alatura, the Allah Avoda, the Al Gimilut Hasadim. Al Hatura, the Allah Avoda, the Al Gimilut Hasadim. And join us, please, in Kiddush and Motzi. We'll give thanks for the sweetness and the sanctity of the day with Kiddush, followed by Motzi, and wish you good health and a Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Borei Puri Hagafen. She drinks on our collective behalf to, to the sweetness of the day. <laughs>